Now let's look at another relationship between inflation and variables in our economy. In particular, we're going to look at inflation and something called the velocity of money. Now, what is the velocity of money? That's the rate at which money turns over during a year. And so we can calculate that by looking at what's nominal GDP, which is the total dollar value of transactions that take place in our economy, divided by the money supply. So if nominal GDP was $15 trillion and the money supply was $3 trillion, then the velocity of money would be equal to 5. On average, each dollar would turn over in the economy five times per year. So we're going to look at the velocity of money and try to figure out a relationship between that and inflation. Economists have looked at this in the past and have said, let's look at something called the quantity equation. Well, the quantity equation takes the definition of velocity and moves it around a little bit. Where velocity was nominal GDP divided by the money supply, we can then say nominal GDP is equal to the money supply times velocity, or m times v is equal to p times y, where p is the price level and y is real GDP. So the quantity equation links the money supply and velocity to the prices and real GDP in an economy. Now when we look over time at what happens to velocity, this becomes a very powerful equation. This is the velocity of M2 from 1959 to 2011. And you can see it goes up and down, but it's going up and down between 1.6 and 2.1 2 in general. Now what that says is its growth rate is relatively constant over time. So let's take the quantity equation and change it into growth rates. When we do that, we can say that the growth rate of money plus the growth rate of velocity is approximately equal to the growth rate of prices and the growth rate of real output. And so we have the growth rate of the money supply, and we have inflation, and we have the growth rate of real output. Now what gets interesting is when we say that this, the growth rate of velocity, is relatively constant over time. In this instance, if we have an increase in the growth rate of money, this is going to lead to either an increase in inflation or an increase in the growth rate of real output. And we know in the short run, we might get an increase in the growth rate of real output. But in the long run, where this is determined by factors of production and the production function, we can say that in the long run, the growth rate of the money supply is going to drive the growth rate of prices or inflation. And that's the real power of the quantity equation.